Middle-aged people like me always vote because we've lived through the election of the greater of two evils. The first election I remember is George H.W. Bush versus Michael Dukakis, an election that also featured a choice between the greater of two good candidates. Since then, I remember clearly witnessing both Bill Clinton's elections and voting in the two times George W. Bush was elected, collectively amounting to 16 years of candidates that were flawed on both sides of the ticket. In some of those four elections, I've seen the lesser of two evils win, and in some, the greater of two evils won. For many young or first-time voters, those four elections may be only history, the way I know about Nixon, Carter, and Reagan. The first time I was able to vote in an election in which I had the privilege of voting for the greater of two good candidates was Obama versus McCain. To a person for whom that is the first election they remember, the American history of contests to protect our country from the greater of two evils may be just that, history. For any person, young or old, watching this, I have four requests. First, read up on the candidates and the issues. Links to the four major candidates and to Evan McMullen are below. Second, since either Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton will become the next president, decide which is the better or least bad of the two, taking into account the issues and facts about who they are. Third, decide whether you want to vote strategically for the better or less bad of the two major candidates, or if you choose instead to vote for one of the other three candidates. Fourth, go vote. Send a message that you care about our country, whether you want that message to be that you want to elect the lesser of two evils, or that you dislike both so much that you want to vote for a truly good candidate from among the other three. The only bad message to send on November 8th is that you don't care enough about the future of our country to have a voice in it.